faking their streams. So I had to investigate. This right here is a stream farm. They set up these giant rooms filled with phones. You place in an order for your music and you start racking up streams. You can also buy views, followers, likes, anything really. And the most blatant red flag that I've seen so far is the rapper Kid Boo. Now Kid Boo is famous and none of us really know why up until now. Somebody please explain to me how this man has 500,000 followers on Instagram, right? He's got all these expensive music videos that get featured on Worldstar. He seems to be getting numbers, yet somehow he only has 331 followers on Twitter. What? That makes no sense. Kid Boo's career is fiction. It doesn't exist, right? It's been bought and paid for by his record label, Island Records, who they're known to do some sketchy shit. Kid Boo is selling hot sauce bundled with his single in order to desperately boost his streams, right? Now this is a technique you've seen many rappers do, people like DJ Khaled who bundled his album with energy drinks. Like, come on, bruh, what does this even mean anymore? Kid Boo is not the only fraudulent rapper out here, and this is not the only technique the rappers are using. The second technique is far more disturbing. It involves defrauding the streaming services themselves using computerized click farms and bots, but these bots are also capable of hacking into legitimate accounts and streaming from those accounts when nobody's using them. In plain English, they're hacking into your accounts and playing music on your accounts. Hey, Spotify, this song by French Montana keeps playing by itself when I am using the client on my PC. I do not know whether this is a glitch or if someone hacked into my account. Please help. Someone hacked into my Spotify and started listening to French Montana. I feel so violated. Yo, someone is listening to Writing on the Wall by French Montana again on my Spotify. WTF. Now what this was, was French Montana dropped a song called Writing on the Wall, and nobody listened to it, really. Even though it had Post Malone, I believe, on it, it was a recipe for success, but it turned out to be a disaster. The song fell off the charts, and then all of a sudden, miraculously, it's suddenly at the 22nd spot in Spotify. But when you further investigate, you find out that it's at position number 1,200 on the Apple Music charts, but it's at 22 on Spotify. So, French Montana was caught botting his streams. Great. Let's go to followers. Twitter audited some rappers, and they wanted to see which percent of your following is real and which is fake. Now, when they looked at people like Young Thug, he got a score of 93%, meaning that 93% of his followers were real and only 7% were fake. Now, on the low end of the spectrum, people like Dr. Dre got only a 32% audit score. Rick Ross got a 46%, meaning that only 32% and 46% of their followers were real. Now, I'm a huge fan of both Dre and Ross, right? These are legacy acts. But to me, what this means means is older acts are not being followed by the younger generation online. The internet is a young man's game and in order for some of these legacy acts to make up the disconnect that they have with the younger demo, they gotta pad their numbers with bot followers and bot views sometimes. And when it comes to inflating numbers, there is even a third technique. French Montana's Montana album goes gold in five days due to him putting multiple songs from 2016 on his 2019 project. Next time academics posts the first week sales for a rapper asking you if it's a W or a L, you don't know what to believe. We don't know what's real. Now look at someone like Little Tecca. People thought that he was buying streams and that he was an industry plant because his hit song kind of came out of nowhere. Personally, I don't think Tecca is a fraud because he had a consistent fan base on SoundCloud before he was signed. If someone is consistently doing well on SoundCloud, to me, most of the time that means they're legitimate because SoundCloud, there's no money. Now the truth is these techniques, all they do is evolve. Before the streaming era, labels would purchase boxes of their artists' albums and just ship them off to these remote warehouses only to resell them after, right? Nobody buys physical copies anymore, so they just have to update their tactics. Now, maybe somebody is asking, why, bro? Why would you buy fake followers? Fake followers don't buy your music or go to shows. Well, they actually indirectly can make you money by making you appear more famous than you actually are. This industry is largely based off of perception. Who's the coolest? Who's the hottest? Who do the masses like? This is called social proof. And I'm here to tell all the struggle rappers out here that if you want to be a rapper and you want to go fraudulent, $60 is all you need to create the perception that you have a buzz. For $60, you could get 20,000 plays, 20,000 followers, and 20,000 likes on something. Now, I don't suggest this. The reason I don't suggest this is if you get fake followers, that dilutes your performance in the algorithm. If people aren't following you in a legit way, then they won't click on your posts and then the algorithm thinks that your content is shit. So basically what we've learned is there are massive stream farm businesses that are uprooting all over Asia, South Asia, India, Bangladesh, all sorts of places. We've also learned that it's extremely difficult to suss out who is faking their streams since everything is digital and every entry point can 
be fake. Put in the comments who you think is an industry plant or who you think is just buying their streams or buying their followers. You don't think they really have that engagement. Do me a 